In the previous video, we introduced this uh, state operator row, right? And in the case of pure states, it could be associated, um, or, or it basically was the projection operator on the state phi um, uh, that, uh, that, make, that is the pure state that we're uh, trying to, um, to use. Uh, now, the interest for the state operator was to look at, um, at mixtures of states. Um, now, one thing we'll have to consider if we want to use the state operator to really describe the systems and describe quantum mechanics is we're going to have to move away from um, time evolution as encoded in the states to time evolution of a state operator. So if we want to be able to write, for example, um, the expectation values through the state operator as, as the trace of row times uh, an observable A or a a trace times... Uh, trace of rho times a operator a. Um, so if we want to do that, we'll have to be able to um, evolve rho to a certain time t. So let's look at that first for a pure state where rho is just a projection operator onto phi. So then rho at a time t um, will be the projection op operator of phi at a time t. So that's, um, if, if our definition has any value, then it better be true that that's the case. So now how do we relate rho at a time t0 to a, a rho at a time t? So if we look at this projection operator and take the total time derivative, uh, or in our other words, if we talk to take the total time derivative of rho, um, then just through a uh, chain rule, we find that uh, we take the total time derivative of phi and use our previous state-based time evolution postulate, the fourth postulate, um, to write this as a Hamiltonian times um, the projection operator. Similarly, um, if, we, uh, if we apply it on the other side, on, on the, the bra side of this projection operator, we'll find the projection operator times the Hamiltonian. So the total time derivative of the projection operator, or the total time derivative of our pure state, um, of the state operator of this pure state, will be equal to, or related to this IH bar, um, to the commutator of H and uh, the state operator. For a mixture, again, because of the fact that rho is linearly related to the projection operators through the probabilities, um, for a mixture we can again just take a weighted sum um, and write the exact same expression where I times H bar and the total time derivative of the state operator will be equal to the commutator of the Hamiltonian with, uh, um, with the state operator. Notice that we can also um, write our uh, row now in terms of unitary operators. So uh, there will be a unitary operator or unitary transformation that we can apply to row, which is now an operator at time t0 to get to a row at time t. So let's now put all of this together by revisiting um, the postulates of quantum mechanics um, that we've uh, worked with. So um, the first postulate which used to be that we can represent a quantum system through states. Now we will write this as the state of a quantum system can be represented by the state operator rho. Um, and that operator operates on the Hilbert space H. Uh, in addition, rho is positive definite and has unit trace. So that's our first postulate. Um, it still has as its core the fact that we can describe things using Hilbert spaces. Um, but instead of describing them by elements of the Hilbert space, we now introduce the state operator, which is associated with the state that we're trying to describe. Um, the second postulate now says that the probability of finding a system in a state chi is given by the trace of rho multiplied with the projection operator on chi. So... Um, if you think about what we talked about in terms of expectation values, um, this, of course, relates uh, very well. So the trace of rho times a projection operator on chi gives us the probability of finding the, finding the state um, in that, uh, um, in that um, state chi. Now, the third postulate doesn't change all that much. So every physical property has a corresponding Hermitian operator A. Um, of course, we, we've seen now that we can write the expectation value through the trace of the product of rho with that um, operator A. And again, if we take A as a projection operator onto chi, then we kind of find what we, uh, what we wrote in, uh, in, in postulate 2. 
um, even though of course the causality is different it, the part the reason why this is true is because expectation value relies on uh, on the um, interpretation of this product as a probability then finally the fourth postulate is that the time evolution of a state operator is given through um, the commutator with uh, of the Hamiltonian with the state operator okay so this is now a new um, way of writing or four postulates and and again uh, I mean we we talked about this before but uh, these postulates are one choice of writing postulates we could have started from path integral formalism um, or, or other approaches but in this case these are the four postulates that we've introduced earlier and we can now rewrite them in the language of state operators to be more generally applicable to uh, states that are mixtures um, in addition to just pure states now the only other thing I want to mention is that uh, there's also a little bit of a change in the language um, that uh, happens with our, uh, um, our quantum state collapse um, postulate. So remember that after a measurement of uh, a, a physical property A um, that gives us a, an eigenvalue A sub n, our uh, state vector is projected down on the eigenspace corresponding with A n. So in case that eigenvalue is not degenerate, um, it just gets projected onto the eigenvalue itself. Now, of course, we'll have to change this description from something that changes the state to something that changes the state operator. And so the state operator changes into um, this expression here where um, we have our uh, projection operators onto state uh, onto the eigenspace corresponding with eigenvalue n rho, and again, another projection operator. And then there's normalization um, by uh, using the trace of um, of a uh, row with uh, a projection operator on n, um, which really corresponds again to a probability, which is indeed what we want to normalize with um, to uh, to obtain a, a normalized expression for uh, the state operator. So do remember these um, four new postulates written in the language of the state operator as opposed to written in the language of states themselves. Uh, so we'll use this in, uh, in lectures to go through um, some of the, or in class to go through some of the, the problems with the state operator rather than using the states.